Hey guys, uh, this is going to be Cold War video number two, the 1960s, sorry, 1960s, 8.3, part two. And we're going to start with Kennedy and the Cold War, as soon as I get this pulled up to full screen. So uh, with, with JFK and the Cold War, uh, he kind of contrasted his Cold War philosophy. Uh, if you recall, I, uh, Eisenhower uh, believed in the army of super bombers and... Um, the more bang for your buck, in other words, uh, save some money. Uh, although, as we know, Eisenhower um, and the government continued to spend more on uh, missiles as a result of the Cold War. Uh, Kennedy's flexible response was the notion to get back to conventional military strategies to deal with local challenges around the world. Um, again, the one thing's for certain: an army of flex, <clears throat> excuse me, an army of super bombers did not give us much flexibility. So Kennedy uh, responded with uh, the, his his uh, agenda for for this can be known. Part of it can be known as a flexible response. Uh, one thing Kennedy was um, confronted with right off the bat was an issue with regard to Cuba. Uh, became communist in 1959 under Fidel Castro, and the CIA had already organized a plan called the. Um, um, <laughs> sorry, I hear something in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear my kiddo screaming in the background, but um, Bay of Pigs invasion was something that was inherited. It was a plan that um, Eisenhower administration under the CIA had had um, called up for an invasion of Cuba. Again, under Castro, it was believed that um, many did not want, the people of Cuba did not want to be under a communist regime, so they thought that uh, they would arm the citizens, and this would start at an area called the Bay of Pigs, and you could basically mount a rebellion in Cuba like the United States had done in other places. Uh, it was incredibly unsuccessful. Um, again, the goal was to... Uh, trigger an uprising and again he went with the plan uh, again with the promise from the CIA that it would work the Bay of Pigs invasion uh, failed miserably as you can see this uh, political cartoon where basically saying your chickens have home, come home to roost that's just an expression like be careful you know kind of like be careful what you wish for um, you know Americans had been invading and getting involved in other places and this time it failed miserably uh, Kennedy went on television and he took full credit for this although uh, privately he did fume that this was a CIA plan and they had misled him with regard to its you know odds of, of success uh, what this did though it brought Soviet Union and Cuba much closer together as you can see uh, the two uh, Khrushchev and Castro hugging one another um, and this would play a big role when we get in a few sides up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, around the same time, guys, President Kennedy and his administration uh, launched one of the more popular programs um, that still exists today, guys, the Peace Corps. Basically, opportunity for uh, young Americans whether they're doctors or not, um, actually some doctors, some nurses, but um, any, anyone could really join the Peace Corps and go around and uh, participate in a lot of humanitarian uh, programs, home building, um, educational opportunities, providing uh, services, healthcare, whatever it might be. Uh, again, one of the very popular programs that still exists um, in the United States. Here we see Peace Corps volunteers being greeted by President Kennedy in 62. The Alliance for Progress, the Latin American Marshall Plan. <clears throat> Kennedy um, gave 20, or the, the government gave 20 billion in aid to Latin America. Um, and here we see, let's see, uh, inaugurated the first school of 22,000 to be constructed um, by the Colombian government with the Alliance for Progress money. Um, remember, we talked about the Marshall Plan being an economic miracle in uh, Europe. Uh, the Alliance for Progress was not that, it had little impact. Um, on Latin American social programs. Um, its goal of helping Latin American countries close the gap between rich and poor. Unfortunately, not sure what the logistics were, if the money just didn't get to the right places or if the Latin American um, you know, government misused it, but uh, it certainly did not have the same effect as the Marshall Plan did in Europe. And, and so um, perhaps one of the areas too is, you know, the, again, the Latin American distrust of America you know, was still a real thing. Berlin Wall in 1961. Well, since 1949, with East and West Berlin, you had many East Germans fleeing uh, to West Berlin again because of just the uh, the oppressive nature of being under the Soviet uh, Soviet curtain, I guess, or regime. Uh, so this became a big problem. Khrushchev essentially delivered an ultimatum on Berlin after see seeing U.S. weakness in the Bay of Pigs fiasco. So he was trying to play tough with the young Kennedy. 
um, again, because, you know, depending on the leader, uh, really Kennedy after Bay of Pigs, they're going to test him because of the political failure that that was. Um, USSR was going to give Berlin to East Germany, so basically stripping Western access to Berlin and closing off uh, this area. Kennedy stood fast, however, and um, he pledged that the U.S. would not abandon West Berlin. He actually gave a famous speech um, in, in Berlin, basically saying so. And um, the result here was that the Berlin Wall, which we, had, we have mentioned before, Crash Course mentioned it as well, uh, was actually built in 1961. It's kind of funny about the... Um, the Berlin Wall, because it seemed that like one day it was not there, and then one day it it was just built really quickly. So um, the goal for uh, East Germany and the Soviets was to stem the flow of people escaping. Well, you know, obviously you might think of it from one perspective. Why don't you just make life better in East Berlin, and people would want to escape, right? Um, but it, obviously that wasn't the Soviet mindset at that time. So um, as a result of this in pre preparation, JFK called up 1,500 uh, U.S. reserves to reinforce the, the West Germans. Um, here you see the wall surrounding West Berlin. Um, the most famous checkpoint where a lot of people crossed over was Checkpoint Charlie in the, the kind of the center of East Berlin. Um, and so uh, very important. Again, obviously, historical symbol there. You see the Berlin Wall still up in the 1980s. Um, the the wall did solve the problem you know less refugees were spilling over into um west berlin uh and air and land routes were kept open so it, it eased the tension and the wall would stay up until 1989 and that again when the berlin wall came down for many that's one symbol that the cold war had ended and we'll get to that in uh the last key period key period nine so now we get to the cuban missile crisis or sometimes referred to as 13 days in october tension um, that occurred as a result of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Many say it was the closest we came to World War III. Basically, the Soviets and us were eye to eye, and um, there was a lot of, of, of tension as a result of uh, many events. So basically what happened was Khrushchev, again, playing off you know, maybe Kennedy's weakness, Bay of Pigs fiasco. Every issue with Cuba was very contentious at this time. Um, he began placing nuclear weapons in Cuba, just just 90 miles off the Florida coast, as you can see from this map and many guys, whether it was a medium range or an intermediate range missile, basically almost every target within a uh, major city within the United States was now accessible um, from the Soviets. And uh, again, they had installations. It was unclear as to how many actual nuclear weapons were already in Cuba, but there's no question the, the sites were there and the silos were already built. Um, so as you can see here, um, this is kind of a more accurate one. Um, basically, only the Pacific Northwest was out of the reach of a Soviet intermediate range ballistic missile. Uh, and again, anything that would attack, whether it's you know Mexico or the eastern part, um, the south southeastern part of the United States, uh, was extremely accessible. And, and certainly, you know, our capital, Washington D.C., being within range of medium range ballistic missiles, uh, very um, very tense. Uh, of course, we can't forget that we had had missiles in Turkey since the 1950s. So um, this is one of those things that, you know, Khrushchev used as kind of a political tool with this. So uh, with this, guys, again, you see these guys eye to eye. Um, Cuban Missile Crisis was went back and forth, guys, as far as, you know, the Soviets, you know, continuing to send ships. There uh, was some communication, but again, communication in the early 60s was not... Um, it's not as if they had a direct line, uh, which, by the way, they would have after this. Um, so there was a little bit of, you know, not miscommunication, but difficulty getting direct communication with one another. And so what happened was basically the United States tried to set an ultimatum. They they put a blockade. Uh, Kennedy called it a quarantine. He believed blockade was too aggressive a term. And uh, the blockade was set to be overrun by Soviets um, arming Cuba. And as these ships were steaming toward the United States... Um, the tension mounted, and at a certain point when the Soviet ships were about to cross the blockade, they stopped and they turned around. And so essentially, Cuba backed down, and um, Kennedy, well, you, you could argue, was willing to, to take us to war over the, over this. And, and, you know, in one way, you say Khrushchev and cooler heads prevailed. Um, I would say the most important part of this is not getting uh, too worried about this part, is 
the that it did ease tensions. We come to when you come to the brink, sometimes it it cools people down. And in this case, what you had is Khrushchev agreed to get all the missiles out of Cuba, but we also the United States agreed to get our missiles out of Turkey. And uh, what happened there was uh, Kennedy kind of saved face because he didn't have to announce that until six months later. So he waited for everything to kind of die down before he announced, oh, by the way, we're taking our missiles out of um, Turkey. So uh, it did lead to a new spirit of cooperation. You had Kennedy and Khrushchev realizing they had come dangerously close to nuclear war. Um, we have a nuclear test ban treaty that came out of this. No more atmospheric testing. Um, Khrushchev refused on-site inspections, which, which was almost part of the deal. Uh, uh, not only did the United States and Soviet Union sign this, but all major powers except France and China agreed to this one. Uh, JFK considered the treaty his greatest achievement um, at the time. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, Also, hotline installed, so they could pick up the phone and talk to one another. Here's another Herb Block uh, political cartoon, guys. Uh, let's get a lock for this. Yeah, you think? Um, for nuclear, you know, obviously this is representing nuclear annihilation. Um, so the two would have, have that and um, very important. Of course, fate intervenes here, guys, with the assassination of President Kennedy. And uh, if you have never been to, to Dallas, guys, I would strongly recommend it. Um, been there a few times. And again, just the scene there, uh, again, there's still uh, a monument. There's still a ton of conspiracy theorists who are willing to sell you all kinds of theories on that. But just to me, the ground itself, it has this weird air to it i mean i can't can't describe it but when you're in a place where you know you know that his american history you know a sad moment yes but american history was made um i don't know i can't describe the feeling but it was definitely um one of those experiences and every time i'm in dallas i do make make a point of spending an afternoon down there just because of the powerful effect it has on me um of course, Vice President Johnson would be sworn in, and with that, you see them aboard Air Force One. One thing about uh, Mrs. Kennedy, guys, is that she wore the bloodstained dress pretty much into the night and into the next morning. She knew she would be on TV, and she wanted the um, she wanted those responsible to um, to feel um, to see her in the dress and to see that she was standing standing oops standing fast against against them. So. Uh, there you see Lee Harvey Oswald, the assassin. Again, there's many conspiracy theories. Um, Oswald himself was actually killed by Jack Ruby um, as he was being taken to court. So that ends the uh, chapter on that and obviously ending uh, Kennedy, which leads us to um, our next cycle in history with, uh, with LBJ and the Great Society, which we will talk about um, in the next part of this lecture.